this right here. All right. So first of all, I just want to welcome the moderators. Thank you so much, and thank you for that sound check, everybody. And uh, it looks like we uh, ran into some difficulties there, but that happens sometimes. And uh, I want to go ahead and uh, just give a big shout out to the moderators, of course, Candy, uh, Kevin Green, uh, Denny, uh, D Denny Riddell, and uh, Gurvinder, uh, GP, as I call him. And uh, thank you for your help, everybody. And thank you to everybody who's on the chat and uh, and here today and maybe not on the chat just watching and wherever you are i do hope you're drinking out of one of these these are available at the uh, cichlids and coffee at the cichlids and coffee web web page or teespring page and uh, they do help support the channel and also of course um, the super chats help support the channel and i really appreciate when you folks do that as well so um Let's go ahead and get into, uh, right off the bat, what's been going on here. And uh, I've had a, uh, a few videos that got released here. And I just want to go ahead and check one more thing here. All right. So a few videos that got released, and uh, one of them was on was on pre-filters. I, you folks know, I like pre-filters. I'm kind of an advocate of pre-filters. Uh, I think they they um, they take some of the load off of the type of of filters that um, I feel are the most difficult to work on, which are the canister filters. And so, and so I, I like being able to have a different layer of filtration that I can just take off very quickly, rinse and put right back on, and it, it, it lengthens the amount of time uh, between canister, you know, when I have to crack open those canisters. And of all the different kinds of, of filters that, that we work with, I think that the canisters, the canisters I think we have to consider as the ones that are the most labor and time intensive. I mean, a hang on back filter, I mean, you unplug it and you just do your thing takes just a few minutes. I mean, uh, for me, I use pinky, uh, I, I use uh, pinky floss inside of some cartridges inside of my marine land. So it probably takes me longer than others who would just pull out the media, give it a rinse, put it back in. So hang on backs are very fast. And uh, I wouldn't be that necessarily um, uh, promoting or big on pre-filters on a hang on back only because they're so easy to work on. I mean, my, you know, they're, they're right at usually right at chest level or right at eye level or just below that. And they're, they're just simple. Uh, so, you, so, um, uh, some, I mean, some, you don't, I mean, some are very easy to work on. Don't really need, uh, pre-filtering necessarily. Uh, most, a lot of you that have some use, um, filter socks, which is just a form of pre-filtering anyway. So, uh, it's not something necessarily that I would, that I would uh, promote for some either. And, uh, so really for me, the pre-filters, their, their place in the hobby in my mind, and you may or may not agree with this and you may or may not use them, but uh, in my mind, their place in the hobby is, is more with the canisters uh, that, um, that can be allowed to go for longer periods of time without having to go through all the labor of breaking them down, uh, pulling everything out, cleaning, rinsing, putting back together, uh, which is uh, more of a labor intensive process. So, so if you watched that video, you saw that with a four month interval, I could probably go another another month or two. I could probably go six months with a small Sun Sun 302. Now, granted, the load is is, is spread out in that tank between uh, two Sun Suns and a Marineland bio wheel, dual bio wheel. So the, the load is is spread out a bit, and uh, but I could go four to six months with those canisters, and that that's pretty good. I think that's pretty good, and. Uh, and I think it's because I have those pre-filters on there. Now, I'm not sure if it's because of how hard the um, the Fluval FX6 is pulling, because it does pull a lot harder than the um, than the Sun Suns do. But the the interval between maintenance on the on the um, on the Fluval is not quite as long. I have to get into that Fluval probably three months max maybe four um, of course i have a very heavy bio load in that tank as well and the fluval is fx6 is handling the entire the entire tank 
So a combination of how hard it, it actually pulls, I mean, with a, you know, over, well over 500 gallons per hour um, is the rating. I think maybe, maybe even seven or eight, I don't know. It's, it moves a lot of gallons per hour. It's the only filter on the tank. And so even with that coarse um, pre-filter on there, I still need to get into it, um, you know, on a, you know, four months maybe at, on the outside before I got to get in there. Now, um, I am using a layer of pinky floss on the top of the center of the Fluval FX6, if you're familiar with that canister, and it gets uh, pretty gunked up. If you've seen some, some videos of me tearing apart that filter, you'll know what I mean. And I do have to open it up from time to time just to swap that out. I may actually stop using pinky in that high volume canister because it, it does tend to it does tend to gunk up and I believe slow down the flow. Whereas if I was spreading the gunk out that does get in there uh, among all the media, I would probably have a better flow in that filter. So uh, between the sponges and everything else. So I think I'm gonna uh, possibly stop using the pinky uh, in, that, in that filter. I've stopped using pinky in the 302s, the Sunsun 302s under the 60 gallon. And uh, really the only place I'm really using pinky on a regular basis now, the pinky floss, is uh, I'm using it in the cartridges, the plastic cartridges that I bought for the Marineland uh, canister filter. So, so that's working there and it's working well. Let me just make an adjustment here. Okay. So that was the pre-filters. Then I did a, a, I, I did a, a video that was originally intended to be um, something to help out folks that are, that are getting started or, or want to get started. So I came up with a video with some tips and uh, it turned into, you know, you want big, beautiful fish, watch this. And, uh, but really what that video is, really it's about um, just some tips that I feel that I've that I've uh, that I've hard won that I sort of went through the hard knocks and learned, and uh, and and they're tips that I would give to somebody who's either starting an aquarium, or about to expand into larger tanks, more tanks, more fish, and so that that video is is just full of those kinds of tips, and um, it, both of those got a a, a, a pretty good response. Um, not sure exactly. Uh, the actual number of views, but I think they were pretty good. They got a pretty interesting response, and uh, I can pull them up here. The uh, about 3,500 views on the pre-filter, and about 35, 3,400 on the. Uh, so you want a big, beautiful fish. So you know, kind of around the channel average. Uh, nothing viral. Nothing. Nothing that went crazy, and. Uh, When I, after I posted that, that, uh, that big beautiful fish uh, video, I, I realized that I had left off one point that is real vital in my mind, uh, real important for being able to um, maintain a tank. And I'm gonna release that in a, just a standalone video that you're gonna see coming up that's, that's gonna be called the most important word in fish keeping. And uh, some of you watching the live stream right now can probably guess what that word is. Uh, one word, the most important word in fish keeping, uh, what do you think it is? And uh, so at any rate, put, put your comments in the chat. I'd like to hear, uh, see if someone can guess it. But if you guess it, if you guess it, I'm not gonna tell you, uh, I'm not gonna tell you that, that you did because that'll give away the video. So <laughs> I'll tell you next week if you did. <laughs> Now, the, the other video I released, which, which, uh, which, which I knew was going to get some interesting uh, traction, was the one on killing beneficial bacteria on purpose. And um, the, uh, the, the thumbnail might have been a little bit, a little bit alarming. And, uh, you know, I, I expected, you know, I, I, I expected to see a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of this kind of a reaction, you know, I, I expected people to uh, uh, to go after it, you know, to, to kind of go after it, and uh, and kind of lose their minds a little bit. Let me just check one thing here. Okay, I'm seeing some guesses already. Filter and patience, patience again, uh, Edgar. 
and uh, end style filter. Very, very cool. Okay, so uh, Chevy Fish Flow. These are these are these are great. You know, I could do a video on on these words that you're actually uh, <laughs> suggesting, and uh, I could just do a video on each one of those words for next week. I think that would be pretty good. But uh, at any rate, let me let me get back here to the stream. Those are good guesses, really good guesses. Anyway, I really thought everybody was going to lose their mind, and some people did lose their mind. Uh, you know, and uh, but everybody kept it. Um, pretty civil, and um, I only had to uh, block uh, a couple people from the channel. <laughs> you know, the beauty about YouTube is that if someone, if someone is really just being kind of an asshat, you you can you can go ahead and just just get rid of them and block them, and, and that's it. You never see them again. They never see you again, and they they sit out there in troll in Trollville wondering whatever happened to that channel that I visited I don't see it anywhere that is it gone now and uh, maybe they never realized that they were just blocked from it but um, there are only a couple of those you know most people that get onto my channel are are, are very decent and and you know respectful and, and and nice you know sweet they have they have manners but I'll, but I'll uh, I'll read you a couple of the comments uh, this was Katie Murphy Katie Murphy said Ben this is one of those uh, paradigm shift moments my initial reaction based on years and years of everyone saying do it this way makes me think your experiment won't work but pioneers think outside the box and eventually we all follow this can only be proven through experimentation good for you for not conforming to the rule quote unquote the concept makes me uncomfortable for sure I think it made a lot of folks uncomfortable and I think that uh, you know sometimes people will will look at the thumbnail and then comment and uh, and very often not even look at the video. That's one of the the, the issues that occur in, in uh, you know sometimes on YouTube. You, and you can tell you can tell when you've been on YouTube for a while, you can tell the folks that are commenting that really didn't didn't watch the video. And so and but the ones that watched it, I think for the most part, uh, some disagreed. Certainly there were some disagreements in there, and that was okay. And some of them uh, expressed. Uh, legitimate concern that made sense and and some people would just immediately went to that'll never work that's that's impossible that that's uh, that's ridiculous you know so so um, John Larson said I, I've been uh, washing my hang on filters for years using my garden hose it gets them cleaner the bacteria grows extremely fast and in, in heavily populated tanks I do not just do not do water change and filter cleaning on the same day. Plus, the crushed coral holds so much bio on the bottom under the rock uh, rock piles. So, so it looks like some folks were kind of already going in that direction, and the the um, the thumbnail might have given folks the impression. And of course, that that's on me, I guess. The thumbnail might have given the impression that I was that I was promoting. Uh, promoting people to to do something very drastic and so in the comments I made it very clear that anything that I was doing was going to be very very gradual very very uh, just a very gradual uh, making of the tank the more um, the better real estate for beneficial bacteria make the tank um, more hospitable uh, a better environment for the bacteria uh, to be in because it's not getting messed with so much like you would with filters and so um, I wasn't promoting uh, going in and rinsing your entire uh, you know everything inside your filter in bleach or something crazy like that and uh, garden spider garden spider said I agree a hundred percent even though all the water passes through the biomedia in the filter starving bacteria on other surfaces you can you can maintain a healthy aquarium with just mechanical filtration in the filter as long as the inside surfaces of an aquarium is seasoned or aged and the substrate is not packed too tight nature will find a way and uh, balance your tank nothing is wrong with improving your system but once plants are growing fish are healthy and water is clear don't keep changing things uh, be consistent 
So um, those are good points, Garden Spider. And and uh, uh, I think I forget who it was. I think one of my one of my friends on YouTube mentioned something about uh, Ben always trying to change stuff in the. <laughs> but interestingly enough, some people commented that with gravel or crushed coral, you would actually, in their estimation, their mind, you would get more, more beneficial uh, bacteria going because of the, uh, of, of the space uh, between the pieces allowing uh, some, some water flow, some oxygen. So it almost would seem from the comments that I received that the, maybe the most ideal world, you know, maybe the, be the best place to get to, certainly for me, in the direction I'm going in. Now some of you that are bare bottom, some of you that uh, have some of those sheets like half man, half sickly that are sort of like far, far lake bottom sheets that don't have any gravel at all, this is not for you. This is not going to work for you. But in the direction I'm going in where I'm thinking maybe two to uh, three inches of, of sand, which is fairly tight, and then maybe some crushed coral on top of that, and, you know, over time the fish will mix it up. Yeah, I get it. But, but you know, some sand substrate and then, and then some crushed coral above that might give me best of all worlds. I might have the, the aerobic on the top and then the anaerobic, you know, on the bottom. And the reason that the, uh, uh, the video was, uh, was entitled the, uh, the, the, the Filter Nitrogen Cycle Lie, the reason it, was, it, it had that title was because uh, I think that, that uh, be because of the marketing that's gone on, you know, we all feel we have to put expensive media in there. We have to have, um, and, and look, I've been promoting this too. I mean, I've been I've been subject to the to the media, and 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 also the you know there are some beautiful tanks you see, and they're they're promoting this media, that media, this much gallons per hour turnover. And I'm not saying those systems don't work because they do work. They're working in my house. I mean, they're I'm 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 operating that way, right? I'm not fully in the transition yet, but um, there's been a lot of marketing. A lot of marketing for expensive media. There's been a lot of marketing for powerful pumps and filters that turn over a lot of water. And this is running water very quickly over media. People like Pond Guru are, are, are trying to offset the rapid water flow by claiming that inside the media, there are places that are still where there is really, you don't have that movement and that heavy oxygen. And because of that, you're able to get a, um, an anaerobic or a rather an aerobic area or I'm sorry an anaerobic area that can produce uh, you know nitrate converting uh, bacteria and so have we been marketed to in a way that has gotten our thinking to think in a certain way when the truth is uh, we really don't we, we really could just have a stable aquarium with uh, enough surface area to support all the beneficial bacteria you need, and your filters could be just for water, for water polishing. And uh, so, I don't know. I, I I certainly know that if I was selling, um, you know, if I was selling canisters, if I was selling powerful filters, uh, filtration units, powerful pumps, and uh, and expensive media, I would want the current mindset that that exists in the in the hobby. That's the mindset I would want. But this mindset has put us into a position where very few people, and, and I've seen a few of them on, fa on, fa you know, on YouTube, a few of them uh, have posted videos about it, very few actually get the entire cycle, right? The entire cycle, where you actually then convert uh, nitrogen you know, back and, and have it gas off or go into sulfur gas or whatever, whatever however it does, it, it, it goes back to nitrite. If someone, someone said nitrite, then it gases off or something. But whatever that process is where nitrogen actually is reduced in your tank, uh, short of having plants, which is not an option that is available for people who have uh, African cichlids. We, we really can't have plants unless we run our water through an aquaponics uh, setup. And I've seen some uh, YouTubers out there that that do that. They have these beautiful aquaponics sitting in a window and their tank water circulates through that and back through the tank and uh, they're massive units and I'm, but I'm not sure really how much nitrate reduction is going on. So um, so anyway I, I, I threw that out there and I just wanted to 
to to get ideas going. I wanted what what some people call a a spark session, where people start sparking and thinking. And uh, so someone put. Uh, let me see, Richard Maloney, Ben, I love you, love your videos, but I think you're losing your mind. <laughs> That's great, Richard, thanks. And uh, cichlids are, uh, and goldfish and koi and, and uh, can never have too much beneficial bacteria unless you're considering your canisters to be nitrate factories, which I believe is 100% possible without continuous cleaning, no disrespect, don't touch the back walls of mine, allowing for algae and bacteria. And with uh, mad water changes, this works even in a bare bottom. Maybe I'm losing my mind too. <laughs> well, you see, there, there were some folks that disagreed, but were willing to at least take a peek and, and, and consider the option, which I thought was, was very, uh, very good. But, um, and, and you know, this, bring, this comment brings up certain, uh, certain ideas. I mean, look, you're, you're only, I think you're only going to get the amount of beneficial bacteria that your, you know, you, that your fish can feed, you know, that you're feeding and your fish and their waste and ammonia production. You're only going to get uh, a certain amount of beneficial bacteria. And so um, uh, when you say that uh, you can never have too much beneficial bacteria, well, yeah, I maybe, yeah, I, I think that, um, you can have the right amount of beneficial bacteria, uh, which is what your aquarium can support, but you're not going to go past that, and uh, because it's just not going to be fed. But you can have too little beneficial bacteria, and that's the risk of messing with the beneficial bacteria. Because if you get too little, and your ammonia is not being converted into nitrite, uh, you're going to have a problem. You're going to have a spike and you're going to have a lot of stress and possibly death on the fish. And uh, so at any rate, if, 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 you, if you start to do something like this, if you start to, uh, I'm going to be adding some sand substrate, uh, perhaps below the, 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 the crushed coral. Uh, if, if you start moving in a direction like that, uh, go gradual, go very, very gradual. I would, I would recommend it more for an established tank or if you're brand new and you're just starting a tank and it has not been established, then you can start it off right off the bat with some, with some sponge filters and, um, or some sponges in your filters or a sponge filter and a deep substrate. And, uh, and that would, I think that would work too. Or if you have a very, uh, you know, a seasoned established tank like I have, then that would be a, a, a way, something to consider. Uh, red Sev, Red Sev, my first, now, now, now check this out, this, 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 tank, this uh, comment was very interesting. My first tank I picked up in an abandoned, repossessed house. It was a 55 gallon bow front with half the water evaporated out of it. No filter action, just a bubbler, just a bubbler left. In it were an assortment of around, around the world cichlids and barbs, even a 10 inch plus pleco. Since they appeared healthy and happy, I read up on the ins and outs of fish keeping before moving them. The lore did not fit my very obvious findings. To this day, I'm tempted to add media to my tanks, but have been able to resist the urge, and I have had, uh, and I have had severe overstock situations where my fish grew too fast and I took a little long to set up more tanks. Since I also keep very deep, multi-layered substrates, nitrates have also never been an issue to each his own, but this was my experience. How crazy is that? You find this abandoned tank and it's full of, of uh, what look like healthy fish. Now, ideally they're not living in what you and I would consider ideal conditions, but um, anyway. Now, Catfish Cove, uh, someone who, who is, uh, visits the channel regularly, Catfish Cove, or Catfish, I'm sorry, Catfish Cave, I'm sorry, Catfish Cave, and you're, you might even be on this, on this today, but uh, 
let me see here the clean the clean piece of your filter will immediately start to grow beneficial bacteria again the rich flow of nutrients through it is too good a piece of real estate now if you permanently remove a piece that would be different or if you cleaned it weekly like a pre-filter every surface has a layer of BB now regardless uh, of, of what you do in the filter curious as to why you want to shift the BB location as an experiment to eventually try a filterless tank perhaps okay so we have a question mark there so um, yeah catfish cave I mean it, it is a, a you know it's a very gradual gentle slow experiment that is trying to uh, move the the colony if you will the population of beneficial bacteria more into an area that gets uh, messed with less than than uh, filters and that really is the only the only purpose of it uh, Dixie Dixie secular secular skeptic Dixie secular skeptic canisters and sumps work because nutrients are forced across the bacteria so you get really nice growth I'm not saying you won't get growth in the tank just less efficient growth and cleaning the water if it's not forced through the bacteria also you can see bacteria build up and you're going to clean uh, the mung off because you don't like how it looks you're going to vacuum your substrate you'll be removing bacteria so um, my, my vacuuming has become very surface very light on the surface uh, even in the tank behind me I'm not doing a lot of uh, very deep vacuuming and I do have a uh, I'm almost uh, reluctant to change scenes because of the problem I've had with my sound here let's see if I still have sound but there's the uh, you see that substrate there behind me maybe about an inch of uh, crushed coral which is mostly shells and and things of that nature you know some coral in there I'm sure but it's mostly crushed shell, shells the uh, so Dixie Secular Skeptic goes on to say that said if you can pull off a deep substrate that doesn't need to be mixed theoretically you should end up with both nitrifying and denitrifying bacteria and then you see your, your nitrates go down maybe not great for plants but sort of a legend in the hobby and, and that's true I mean very few very few times do you see folks that have actually gotten that complete cycle where they've um, they do have uh, you know nitrates are being controlled without the need for uh, for water changes all right so let's uh, let me check one thing here and let's take a look at some of your comments let's see what you've been talking about here I have a 30 second delay on the on the uh, chat so if you chat if you post something and notice it comes up in a, a, a 30 seconds later uh, don't don't fret it's just taking it's taking its time let's see here okay If you folks have any, um, if you have any questions for me, go ahead and put them in the chat. I'm looking at the chat right now, and uh, let's see here. Jeff Beatty, do they make a pre-filter for an FX6 intake? Yeah, um, uh, Jeff, the the in the. The pre-filter for the FX6 is actually a um, a large sponge that you put over the over the uh, the tube. You take the uh, you take the uh, that grilled unit, the intake uh, off, and you just you just slip the sponge over the uh, over the, the the tube that it would attach to, over that that part of the that that pipe that comes down into the tank. Let's see here.
if you have any any questions uh, by the way one of you did get the right word that's going to be uh, the focus of, of, my, of an upcoming video one of you did get the right the word right and I'm not gonna say who but um, you did get it right <laughs> uh, Mark Shar What's wrong with using under gravel filters in conjunction with other types of filtration? It seems like no one is using under gravel filter these days. I've had very good luck with them. You know, I, I, folks that still use those, and, and I don't even know where you can buy them. I don't see them in shops too often, but it's funny, but everybody who uses them uh, swears by them and really likes them. I can certainly see in a planted tank how it, it would be pulling nutrients down for the plants. Um, so, um, Maybe underground, under gravel filters, maybe those things will make a, uh, we're going to, are going to make a comeback. Dark Matter 780, I saw the killing bacteria title and was going to cry, but I watched the video and got info and it eased my mind. And yeah, that, that's what I was talking about, Dark Matter. Uh, there are folks out there who, who uh, comment and react just off of the, um, off of the thumbnail. And you know, thumbnails, Thumbnails, admittedly, are are designed to um, are, are designed to create uh, you know to, to create a response, and uh, and uh, but you know ideally that response is getting into the video and watching it, not just uh, coming to a conclusion uh, off of the uh, off of the title. And uh, and what Robert Johnson says, I mean, uh, YouTubers in general over clickbait their videos, not just fish keeping YouTube as a whole and uh, so sometimes I understand uh, ignorant comments yeah that's what I'm saying you know and and uh, clickbait has a bad connotation but look the truth is, is that every every uh, thumbnail is created with the intention and the hope that somebody will will uh, click on it now if you if, if your video has nothing to do with um, with what that what that clickbait was about, you're, you're, you're going to die on YouTube. I mean, that's, that's the way that rolls. Let's see here. Mike's Aquariums, if you know anything about fish keeping, then success comes in many different uh, ways in the hobby. That's one thing I'm, I'm definitely learning, Mike. Uh, there are a lot of, of ways to, um, I mean, isn't there a fish keeper in, um, is it in San Francisco that hasn't done a water change like in 20 years? And, uh, you know, there's some very interesting stuff going on out there, and uh, and somehow between what's going on and the marketing hype, there has to be um, you know there, there there's a balance in there, and that's sort of what I've been looking for. Let's see. Casey Lee, I've uh, I've recently gotten into African cichlids, mabunas. I've made a lot of mistakes in my recent endeavors. I recently learned that my AC uh, had, my African cichlid had parasites. So I've treated API General Cure and uh, it looks like also ordered, but then ended off. Um, yeah, parasites, you know, you really got to treat the whole tank if you see parasites because it's, it, it's, uh, it tends to be uh, tank wide. I've, I've treated the tank, this tank that you're seeing right now, I've treated it for parasites. Uh, you probably notice on the eye biter, Ever since I've had that eye biter, his belly has been a little bit, a little bit in. When his fins are, when his, uh, uh, when his pectoral fins are are, are, are clamped in, uh, you don't really notice it that much. But um, but his his belly is a little in. I feed him at the side of the tank. I feed him um, frozen krill. He waits for me. On the uh, on, on what would be to you the uh, left the uh, far far left of the tank, he waits for me in the corner, and I drop frozen krill in a in one of the cutouts on the top of the tank. And one of these days, I think I put it on film one time. Now when I walk in the whenever I walk in the room, he goes to that corner and thinks I'm going to give him frozen krill. He's like a trained puppy, and I'm just trying to fatten him up. He's never acted ill. He's never uh, been reluctant to eat. And uh, at any rate, uh, 
Mark Tsar, don't believe you need to try to grow bacteria on the decor and in the gravel. Dude, that stuff is everywhere. Yeah, I, I think what I'm trying to do, Mark, is just uh, put it in a place that just gets messed with less. That's all. I'm just trying to make the real estate within the tank more desirable for the beneficial bacteria and, uh, and, and uh, use the filters more just for polishing purposes uh, eventually. I mean, and again, I have to stress, it's a gradual process. It's not something that would happen overnight. Let's see here. Now you see, Mark, you're saying the beneficial bacteria works uh, better in the filter because of the high exposure to water volume as the water flows over it. The bacteria that that's on the gravel and the decor is exposed to less water. And um, I get what you're saying. This uh, my tanks have a tremendous amount of aeration, a tremendous amount of uh, they're very heavily oxygenated because of the amount of surface tension breakup that I have with, um, with power heads. So the, the oxygen in the tank is very high. I also have a lot of water movement going on. And, uh, and also, and this goes back to the whole purpose of it, is that fast water movement uh, over that media, is it making it impossible for you to be able to get a complete nitrogen cycle where, um, where, where nitrates would then be uh, reduced naturally in the tank uh, by converting and 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 uh, you know gassing off is that now something that's impossible and we're just going to have to rely on on um, you know on ongoing uh, water changes. So um, now I'm not saying I ever want to get to a point where I never do water changes because water changes definitely have have a purpose and, and a value that go beyond just reducing nitrates. But um, but at any rate, it it it's uh, it would seem it would seem that the uh, we may be of a mindset we may be of a mindset that is um, is actually preventing that cycle from ever occurring, and also uh, at the same time, I mean, making it impossible to occur, and at the same time tying us to expensive media and uh, and big canisters and pumps and things of that nature so so that that is sort of the uh, that that's the gist of this of this live stream is that we we may be actually we've been sort of with good marketing herded into a a system that I mean think about it you now need you now need expensive media you need media some of you don't use expensive media some of you just break up lava rock and and uh, use just sponges, I get it. But expensive media, uh, high flow, high G gallons per hour, uh, you know, water movement, which is expensive pumps, um, and, and water changes, which re require us to buy water conditioners. And uh, again, it's a great formula if you're selling these products. It's a great way to get people to think if you're selling these products. If I was a salesman for these products, I would be trolling Ben like crazy, because uh, if if he because if, if I'm anywhere near uh, right, I could end up with a tank that is um, relatively stable, needs very infrequent maintenance, and uh, and there are folks out there I know because they've commented on my videos that are doing that now. They don't, they don't mess with their tanks. They have a stable environment. And when they have planted tanks, even more so, the plants do most of the, of the work. And uh, especially in a deep, deep substrate, a dirt, dirt, you know, a dirt gravel or dirt sand substrate with, with lots of plants. And you've got, you know, the tank is, is very much self, self-containing and, 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 and doing what it needs to do. And any water changes would be maybe just to add some minerals or to just freshen things up a bit, and and in some cases they're getting it accomplished with a, a drip, a drip uh, system that just simply handles uh, the evaporation that's going on in the tank, and otherwise they they never do they never do water changes. So um, so again, I'm not I'm not trying to uh, get anyone to go out there and do something crazy and drastic, but 
I do want you folks to think about it. Give it some thought. And, uh, and go from there. Let's see here. Uh, Navindra Medagoda. If I shut the canister during the feeding time, will the bacteria get killed? How many hours can we keep the filters shut per day? I've uh, I I can only tell you from personal experience that I've had um, I've had power outages. One that lasted uh, eight hours between six and eight hours. And uh, during a period where we were having, there was some construction going on or there was some accident, I think, and some power box got taken out or something. I forget what it was exactly. It was a long power outage. And um, they fired back up and uh, everything was fine. There, there was no, uh, I didn't see any stress in the fish. And so, um, so, all right, let's go here. All right. So, any more questions, go ahead and uh, and post them. And if I've missed anybody, if I've missed anybody who did a super chat, I apologize. I've been running pretty straight through here. All right, so let's take a, little, a look, a quick look before I end off here. What's coming up? I have a, uh, I finally, believe it or not, I finally am going to be able to release my uh, my video of my trip to Nolan's, which occurred back in February of this year. And uh, what was interesting to me about that about that video was was the uh, was it wasn't that long ago when we were actually in a normal world <laughs> and you see people walking around mingling there's no masks anything like that it was kind of a kind of like a little bit of a of a wake up call to me about what the heck what the heck has happened here and uh but i finally got got a, got around to editing and putting out my trip to nolan's where i was going to go down and give a talk and uh uh, from there, but I ended up just going down and meeting some of the, the folks that came down, and that's going to be a lot of fun, and uh, you know, great crew down at Nolan's. If you're near Santa Ana, Santa Ana California, visit Nolan's Aquarium. Uh, great, great place, great crew. In that video, I, I use the uh, Cobalt, uh, the Cobalt Air system, and uh, so that I have an air stone in a bucket during that 45-minute uh, ride down to Nolan, so it kind of makes makes it a little bit less stressful on the fish. I took a very large um, Malawi hawk to him, and uh, so I just rehomed him by giving him to Nolan's. And uh, so that's coming up, and uh, that should be uh, finally, I mean, it's one of those finally moments because it's taking me forever to get that video out. So it looks like the, the audio is working. Okay, hey, we have someone from Brazil, Victor, Hugo, Robin Dutra, hello from Brazil, very nice content about the sun suns thanks a lot hi victor i'm glad you're here thank you and uh, i hope everything is well and returning to normal in brazil and uh, somebody is asking any thoughts on the best cichlids to breed marks aquatics best cichlids to breed you know if we have any of the uh of the pros on the chat today like your uh josh cunningham or uh uh, our friends over at the uh, Cichlid Shack, you know, if uh, James Largo, uh, they would probably know more about that since they breed and sell for a living. I think any cichlid that you are able, like if, any situation where you get a male and let's say three females, and um, some people have suggested a dominant and subdominant male and maybe five females uh, in let's say a 40 long, uh, you know, or 40 breeder. Uh, you're going to see some pretty spectacular stuff. You're going to see, you know, mouth brooding, which is pretty amazing, and uh, you know, fish that are, are leaving and coming back into the mouth. You're going to see. Uh, uh, anyway, it, it's just to me, it's pretty amazing uh, the whole process. And and uh, certainly, if I had the tanks and the uh, and the time to do it, I would get more into it 
myself, uh, you know, Lethronops. Uh, I have a red cap that uh, was holding for a little while, didn't really go anywhere. But um, I think Lethronops would be fun uh, to breed. And uh, I've seen some South American uh, cichlids, like I think, um, I think even IFG, Evan Alexander, had a fish that laid like a thousand eggs or something. And, and uh, you know, you see these swarms of, uh, <laughs> These swarms of fry, and uh, and and how gentle these big, monstrous South American cichlids are with these fry, it's pretty uh, pretty interesting to watch. So I would say, uh, yeah, you know, look around, just check out some videos. Uh, just put you know fish fry, or, or uh, you'll probably get a lot of fried food videos. But <laughs> but breeding breeding tropical fish, breeding African cichlids, uh, you'll get a lot of videos on YouTube, and you can then choose which one uh, you you would like. I, I think the, the, the way that they breed just in general and, and the, the mouth brooding activity of African cichlids is just fascinating. I think it's, it, it's amazing. Um, <clears throat> so uh, Aqua Balls, hey Aqua Balls, you're in that video my friend, so tune in tomorrow. <laughs> I was able to highlight a couple of the folks I met. I met a lot of nice people down there. Uh, Aqua Balls was there, so if you want to see, if you want to put a face with the name Aqua Balls, uh, watch tomorrow's video. <laughs> He is a uh, he is a a, uh, a fish breeder. He breeds uh, exotic and hard to find fish. He's also a reptile keeper. Uh, he keeps snakes, and uh, we have somebody from Windsor, Ontario, Tamara. Hi, Tamara. I'm glad you're here. So, um, electric yellows. Let me see. Is Yellow Labs? Yeah, Yellow Labs. GP. I think she's talking Yellow Labs. All right. So. Um, Thank you everybody for sitting in. Thank you everybody for going through with me through the little glitch. What I'm going to be doing on these videos in the future is I am going to be putting timestamps. And what that means is uh, I'm going to be uh, putting stamps under the video that let the person know that if you want to go to the subject matter, go to this time. If you want to see what's coming up, go to this time. If you want to go into the question and answer period, go to this time. That way people don't, because some people just don't have an hour to sit and watch a video. And... Uh, uh, I am excited because uh, probably within, a, 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 depending on how long it takes me to get one final component that I need, I'm going to start. Uh, I'm going to start broadcasting using a uh, this, which is called it, it's a it's called a Sony, a Sony A6400. This is going to give me a, a very, very sharp, very crisp picture, and uh, I'm excited about using it in live streams. But I'm even more excited about using it in vlogging and uh, filming the tanks, being able to take photographs. You know, these these Apple uh, phones. I mean, you got to use the, uh, the the blast. You know, take a lot of photos and hope that one of them is okay. But the Apple is is horrible at freezing uh, at freezing uh, motion. Samsung was much better at that. If I had known that, if I had done my research, I would have stayed in the Samsung universe. Instead, I, I hopped over to Apple. All my kids had Apple, and we, we, you know, we like to airdrop photos to each other. Blah blah blah. So I ended up with Apple, but um, I'm going to be out of the cell phone uh, universe for 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 content, and I'll be using more uh, this camera, which actually gives gives you a true uh, 4K. Even though I think uh, I think YouTube can only support uh, 1080p, but I can get real uh, real true 4K with this. So you're gonna you're gonna start seeing a better a better product, and uh, and hopefully you'll also be able to hear me. So, <laughs> all right. So, uh, Enus Paha, Enus Paha, Ricardo from Portugal. Ricardo, somebody from Portugal. If you're on the stream and you're in Portugal, uh, I want you to know that I'm going to your country. I'm going to be going to Portugal, and uh, maybe you can give me some tips on where to go. All right, so that's it for me, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to my wonderful moderators, Candy, Kevin, Denny, GP, you folks rock. Thank you to all of you that are still on, despite the glitches. Uh, you folks, get, your loyalty gets tested between my crazy ideas and the glitches that we experience. You're, you're constantly being tested, and you yet you still hang in there. So... <laughs> I love you for it. Thank you so much for tuning in, folks. You really do rock. Thank you so much. That's it for me. And be sure to, uh, if you can, if you haven't already, 
be be sure to uh, be sure to hit that uh, hit that button, hit that hit that sub, hit that bell if you haven't already, and uh, if you like the content on the channel, and uh, visit the Teespring store, uh, pick up some swag, uh, some merch that helps to uh, support the channel, and uh, if you super chatted and I missed it, thank you so much for that, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up.